approximately 16 million auto accidents in the United States every year. Costing the economy over $250 billion, traffic accidents accounted for the deaths of over 38,000 U.S. citizens in 2015. Traffic accidents are a real problem, a problem which self-driving cars can fix. 94% of traffic accidents are caused by human error. This explains the huge push by companies like GM, Ford, and Mercedes-Benz towards autonomous vehicle technology. But how do they work? Camera, radar, and lidar are three common sensing systems in development for autonomous vehicles. Camera systems act as the eyes of the vehicle. These cameras easily identify things in the environment like stoplights and pedestrians, but have trouble with weather and depth. Radar systems send out electromagnetic waves and monitor the reflection. Radar has trouble sensing the exact size and shape of the objects around the vehicle, but is weather resistant and reliable in determining if there is anything in the vehicle's path. LiDAR systems are mounted on the roof. Spinning at high speeds, they create a detailed grid of the environment. But LiDAR systems are still early in development and currently cost upwards of $70,000 per unit. These three systems give autonomous vehicles an accurate view of the world around them. Connected autonomous vehicles, or CAVs, combine autonomous vehicle technologies with the fourth center, communication. Connected and autonomous technology are sort of being developed in parallel. But you start to see more and more talk about connected automated vehicles or CAVs because that is really the ultimate implementation. The dedicated short range communication system is the brain inside of CAVs. Imagine an internet server that is working with other systems. It receives and fills requests. With one system, the illustration is simple, but as you add more and more devices, the web becomes increasingly complicated. So how does the CAV manage with all this data? The DSRC limits the range of messages broadcast to vehicles in the immediate area. For example, if my car is braking rapidly, only vehicles within 200 feet need to know. However, if there's an accident blocking the interstate, cars within 15 miles should receive that message. This way, only relevant messages will be processed. We live in Milan, Michigan, a small rural town just 15 minutes south of Ann Arbor. There, the University of Michigan has created the autonomous vehicle testing facility, M-City. We visited to talk to experts about the benefits of CAVs. The reaction times and everything else of these systems is so fast and, and they're always watching that even if you do actually hit that pedestrian, maybe you hit them going one or two miles an hour. The severity was drastically reduced. Whenever they see a Google car, they try to <laughs> avoid them. Why? Because they always you know, drive at the speed limit, very smoothly. Landscape of driving as we know it can really change. Through uh, a computerized network, you no longer need to stop at intersections. You can cut your stopping and starting by 75%. You should get a massive increase in your fuel efficiency. Think of current infrastructure as a convoluted pipe system full of bumps, bends, and turns which take precious time away from your day. CAVs present a world that is more streamlined, straightforward, and far more efficient. All these benefits are great, but people still may be uncomfortable with autonomous vehicles. And some people really feel that they're in a death trap, they, they don't trust this computer to do the driving. For others, I don't think it's so much that they, they think there's anything wrong with it, but they really have to give up control. Baby boomers and their concept of the old muscle cars, which they grew up with, and they want that tactile feeling of controlling a vehicle. And these concerns are not unfounded. Connected vehicles present a new risk, cybersecurity. Ah, ah, ah. You didn't say the magic word. Ah, ah, ah. You know, this is a terrifying experience to have someone take control of this two-ton computer on wheels. Andrew Greenberg's experience with hackers is both frightening and foreboding for the future. If hackers are easily able to take control of vehicles, people in the cars and community may be at risk. You're sending messages saying that there's stalled cars all over the road that aren't really there, and you bring Ann Arbor traffic to a halt, and you look out and you can't imagine what's happening because cars are just sort of stopped. If you wanted to, to get in and change some calibrations or command uh, things through the camera or through a different module, you have to have the right codes to do it. So if you just hooked up by your computer, you, you couldn't break into it. 
if you fake a signal, let's say I'm running at you at 100 mile per hour, but other cars looking at you and say, I don't believe you. You say this is what you said. This is what you do, right? Mm. And you can use those to detect rogue users or fake users. Well, we at this point in time we don't have specific regulations. We're leaving that again to the regulators and to the private sector. All right. So I, you know, I've been working in automotive for 23 years. I've never seen automotive adapt any technology quickly. They're always very slow adopters of technology, slow movers to, to into those realms. But all of a sudden we have these uh, advanced driver systems and autonomous driving type systems and I've never seen, the industry's just moving light speed right now. It's just moving so fast. We want to make sure that we want to move fast, but we don't want to move so fast. We don't take into consideration all the safety issues. We ask our new Congress and President to become more involved with getting CAV technology ready for the road. Full integration of this technology has the capability to prevent millions of accidents and save tens of thousands of American lives. Speed of integration is largely dependent on public opinion and trust in the technology. NHTSA's relaxed regulatory stance encourages innovation. However, any compromises in safety will likely turn public opinion against the technology and set back large-scale implementation many years. We, Congress, NHTSA, and the public should work hard to turn that 94% error to zero. Dear Mr. President, work with Congress to prevent 16 million accidents, 250 billion in damages, and over 38,000 deaths every year. Approximately six. Holy, sorry. <laughs> there are. Oh my God, <laughs> it's just moving on its own. Here, I'm gonna check Mike. Baby.